The question that I have on the table today is, do you know your value? Do you know how valuable you actually are? And the reality is, is most likely you don't know how valuable you are. Because I can see on the news and I can see on social media, I can see it all around me that, that we don't treat each other as valuable as we should do. See, instead of loving our neighbor in society, I, I, I see us doing something very different. I see us comparing ourselves to our neighbors. I see us competing with our neighbor. I see us criticizing our neighbors. And in some cases, like we've seen in recent times, we kill our neighbors. But how about we actually take what Jesus asked us to do and apply it to real life and actually see how radical that statement, love your neighbor, actually is. Because instead of criticizing our neighbor, maybe we would learn from our neighbor. Maybe we would listen to our neighbor. Or perhaps today we will learn how to love our neighbor. See, Matthew 22, 34, Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus is just summing up all the 613 commands in the Old Testament. And he's just saying that's what the Bible was meant for, to teach you how to love one another. And then in John 15, he says, I'm going to give you a new command, a new command. Out of all the commands, like, who are you to give me a new command? Well, Jesus is the word, and so he can give you a command. And anybody who can predict their death, burial, and resurrection and pull it off has the right to give you a new command. And this is what he says. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Wait, not love each other as you want to be loved. No, he takes it a step further. He says, love each other the way I have loved you. So what are you going to do with that? Well, hopefully it's not compete, compare, or kill, or criticize your neighbor, but it's instead listen, learn, and love your neighbor. So what does it mean to love your neighbor? Well, it has everything with the word value. See, value is determined by how much someone is willing to pay for it. See, uh, I did a Google search of the most expensive cars in America in 2019, and the two most expensive cars were a Maybach at $8 million, and the second one, or the most expensive one, was a Rolls Royce at $13 million. The value that we perceive someone or something will determine how we treat that object or that person. See, if you know that this car is worth $13 million, how are you going to treat it? You're going to treat it with care, with caution, with kindness, right? But if you don't know the value of something, it's easy for you to dismiss it or, you know, walk past it or ignore it or not be kind to it or criticize or whatever. You fill in the blank. See, the key in understanding how to love one another has everything to do with you understanding the word value. Value is determined by two things. First one is you, and the second one is the you sitting next to you. See, the first thing that I want us to get across is that, is that you have value. You're incredibly valuable, but not because you were purchased with perishable things, but because you were purchased with imperishable things. You were purchased by the blood of Jesus. I love what the Bible says here in 1 Peter 1, 18 through 19. For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down from you by your ancestors, but it was with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. See, God did not purchase you with money or with gold or silver, even though that would be pretty awesome or valuable. However, he actually redeemed you, the Bible says, from an empty way of life. See, the word redemption here is somewhat similar from taking something that was broken and repurposing it to make it something extremely valuable. For instance, you know how the tortilla chip was made? Well, tortillas were made in a factory, and one day these tortillas were coming out and some of them were broken. So they usually collected the broken tortilla chips and put them in the trash. But this one lady, she found a purpose to redeem these tortilla chips. And then she brought them home, she put them in a bag, she added guacamole and some salsa, and put some cheddar cheese. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Man, cheddar cheese. And guess what? She invented the tortilla chips, and now they're even more valuable than tortillas themselves. Let me tell you, you have been redeemed, and you are the Lord's chips. No, just kidding. You are far more valuable than precious. 
you are far more valuable than perishable things like chips or tortillas or, uh, or an organization or a company that makes millions and billions of dollars. No, you are far more valuable because what you were purchased with, you were purchased with the precious blood of Christ. See, on every Christian, there's a price tag. And it's not a number, it's not an organization, it's a person. And on, if you were to look at that price tag, you would say purchase by the blood of Jesus Christ. God adopted you, but the currency was Christ. And until you understand that, you can't even possibly understand how valuable you are to God. And you can't possibly understand how valuable others are to God as well. So the first point that you need to understand is that you are valuable. And you can't love people until you know how valuable you are from the one who created you. The second thing you need to understand is, is, that, is that your job is not just to add value to yourself, but your job is to add value to others. Philippians 2 says it this way, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others more valuable than yourselves. So we see that word value again. And, and, and this week I, I was listening to a podcast by a guy named John C. Maxwell. And he says one of the things that you need to do in order to be successful in life is to determine beforehand that you are going to add value to people's lives. His father told him, he was an old, you know, his father was like an old pastor back in the day and John C. Maxwell is a leadership guru. And he says one of the things that he does before he leaves the house is determine beforehand who he's going to add value to that day. And so no matter what conversation he's in, no matter who he's talking to or where he's going, his job in the back of his mind is to walk away from that conversation or that relationship adding more value to them than when he found them. So you can do this in your dating relationships. You can do this on social media, that when people meet you, they walk away feeling more valued than when you found them. I wanna challenge you with that challenge. It challenged me when I heard it. And so this week, instead of criticizing people, instead of canceling people, instead of killing people, and by the word kill, Jesus says if you, even if you have hatred towards your neighbor, that's the same as murdering. So instead of murdering your neighbor, how about we listen? How about we love? How about we add value to our neighbor this week? So there's three questions that I wanna leave you with today. The first one is, do you know your value? Do you know your value? The second question is, do you know how valuable others are? And number three, whose lives can we add value to this week? Thanks for listening, I'll see you next week, peace.